1969, I was working Summit Studio, and I was already thrilled to be there because the drummer was Sugarloaf's drummer, the guitarist ended up Dolly Parton's guitarist for over 35 years. Uh, we had a great studio band, but my real heroes were the Memphis uh, studio musicians. When Otis Redding's plane crashed and a lot of them died, a lot of the musicians dispersed, one of them being uh, the drummer Moose that played for Junior Walker and the All-Stars. He played for Otis Redding at uh, the Monterey Pop Festival. It was, he was one of my real heroes. And uh, I was working at the studio in 69 and Baby Huey and the Babysitters came to town from Chicago. Huey was, and most of the band, were heavy, heavy heroin users. Uh, he had come there to try and get rid of the habit. And while they were there, their keyboard player was fooling around the park and fell out of a tree and did a compound fracture to his right arm. They came to the studio one night and decided to record a song there. The producer and the engineer were there and it was more like a party. And the keyboard player was there with a compound fractured arm. And they said, hey Jack, your keyboardist. I, I thought I died and went to heaven. There was Moose, one of the most famous drummers ever in my mind at the time. And all these old Memphis musicians and old Chicago blues musicians and 18, 19 year old Jack. So we recorded a song called Listen to Me and we threw together pretty much the same arrangement that I had done for years in the Ross Memorial of uh, A Change Has Gotta Come, Sam Cooke's old song. Huey and his band about two weeks later went to Chicago. There was a knock on Huey's door and it was somebody with heroin and he shot up and hit the floor dead. That same night, they kicked in the studio door and stole the masters to the two tunes we'd recorded. And probably six months later, out comes an album on Curtis Mayfield's label, Kurtom, and it includes our tracks. And we've never filled in the exact blanks how they went from our studio to that particular album. But our uh, saxophone player, uh, Michael Johnson, called and told them they owed other artists that they had even given credits on the album, including Moose the drummer and myself. And they told him it would be way cheaper to just shoot us which was, it was scary. Well, our guitarist's father was Doug Duggan, who was a retired vice president of uh, the Goldwyn Company of MGM, who had strong New York uh, connections. And he called them and told them if they heard any of his voice, there'd be blood in the streets of Chicago, and advised me to leave town and my wife and I ended up going to South Carolina to work with a band called Freeway, which is a whole other chapter. Meanwhile, all these years later, there's a degree of bitterness still there. And it only got worse after my first heart attack when I was just learning to use a computer and I Googled our band and found that Nelson George had given it our song Listen to Me credit for being the source of the first ever rap sample. And that song to this day is the number one downloaded to uh, for phone tones. Uh, I never received a penny for it, but that isn't the thing that bums me out the worst. It's that our, we never got to travel as a band and play the song much live, and it would have been so much years later, Dick Darnell, my good buddy from Denver, who's an independent producer, he started to speak out on this story. Uh, now that a lot of the who I consider villains in this story are dead and gone, he isn't so worried about 
hurting close fans and everything to revealing the truth of the horrible things that happened. And it's such a vindication for me to hear the truth finally come out.